Well, hello, fellow tape heads. So, uh, my name is Tim, and this is uh, part two, and I think what will become a part three or a three part uh, video series on cassette tape maintenance and uh, restoration. Um, so, the first uh, part I discussed what do you do if, uh, if you have a perfectly good tape, perfectly good cassette? and uh, but are missing the J card. So I showed a DIY uh, process that I use to be able to uh, um, basically uh, find and uh, print out a suitable replacement for a uh, J card uh, from Discogs, which are, uh, has a really good database of, uh, of uh, J cards and, uh, and labels and everything for all kinds of media, whether it be LPs, uh, CDs, or cassettes. And uh, so that one I, I showed how to uh, do a DIY J card for a, uh, uh, a cassette that's missing its J card. And this one I'm going to do the, the opposite. So in this case, uh, you may have a uh, perfectly good, uh, great condition J card, but are for whatever reason missing the tape, uh, whether it be by uh, cassette failure, which is the case that I'm uh, using here. So I've got the original tape, and uh, and it actually it's one of those welded cassettes where the the tape is snapped off at the uh, the leader inside. Um, there is a way, uh, there is a way of actually getting into these, but uh, it's I find about a 50/50 chance at best that you're going to break the cassette trying to uh, open it up in order to reconnect the uh, the tape to the hub. In this case. I didn't think it was worthwhile attempting that because I happened to know before this thing uh, snapped, I was playing it in my cassette player, and uh, I think the tape had been improperly stowed, so uh, it had all kinds of speed issues, and uh, and I think it was probably stored in a car or something like that, and it had some heat damage to it or whatever. So even if I were to uh, reattach it, um, I think it's uh, not worth the effort. I could actually, what I do, another, another technique I do is what I can do is uh, take the parts in half, uh, put a new tape hub in, re-record the original program material, and then have a, almost as good as new uh, cassette. I didn't think it was really worth the effort to do that on this one. So uh, rather than do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually uh, keep this just to prove that yes, I do have the original tape and everything. Uh, but normally what I do in this case is I would get a replacement tape, whether it be a new, uh, new old stock one like this, or um, like me, I have a, a large collection. I've bought several large collections of cassettes, and uh, many of those cassettes are not to my taste. And uh, whether it be classical music or country and western or uh, some of the really, really old stuff, but what I find is a lot of that old stuff with, uh, that I don't like, the cassettes in them are just in immaculate case. Case in point, I've got this uh, Engelbird Humperdinck uh, album here. And I've got tons of these types of tapes like uh, Nana Muscuri or you know, Bette Midler or something like that. Not my cup of tea, might be yours, sorry. But that's just the, uh, the case. So I've got literally hundreds and hundreds of tapes that are in, in immaculate condition and could easily be re-recorded over. So this one actually is a screwed, um, screwed together shell uh, tape. The tape itself looks like it's been barely played. There's no dirt on the, uh, on the, uh, uh, the pad that's underneath the, uh, the tape on the uh, inside here. And it just looks almost brand new. So I, I, I Bet you it's only been played once or twice in, in its life. So, uh, not surprisingly, I, I'm not a big fan of Engel, Engelbert Humperdinck. So, um, what I can do, and, and it depends on how long the tapes are and whether it fe fits the program material. In this case, I'm going to use the new old stock, but uh, you can easily make a label and then you can stick on the label over top of that, re record it, just cover the, uh, the recording uh, wells on the top here. With tape and uh, re-record something you really like and make a really nice tape out of this. So those are the two options and I do that for uh, for many of my tapes that, uh, that I, 
that need repairing or replacement or restoration or whatever. So in this case, we're going to uh, uh, go onto the computer and we'll try and find the, uh, the label for this cassette. And then what we're going to do is we'll get the original program material, which I, I have. I've got a number of Beatles CDs and, uh, and I've got all of the songs that are actually on this uh, cassette. So what I'll do is I'll, uh, and in FLAC, in digital lossless uh, format, and then we'll record them. Uh, as they are on the, uh, the case and in the order that they are on the case. And uh, we'll make a nice tape to replace this one and then I will find the labels for this, for this cassette and we'll uh, show you how to in, you know, uh, basically print and, uh, and put new labels onto a new old stock cassette or a repurposed cassette like I uh, just showed you. So we'll take a break here. We'll uh, go onto the computer, and I'll show you where we where you can find the uh, labels, and I'll show you a, a program that I use. You can use, there's tons of graphics programs out there. So I use Microsoft Publisher. Um, some people use Word. It's not really a, a graphic a graphics uh, program, but it it could work. And some people do use Word with templating and stuff. Um, I just find Publisher is really, really easy to use. And of course, you could use Photoshop, whatever. Uh, the idea is to be able to print these labels out in the same size that they are on the cassette, and then, uh, and then snip them out, and then uh, reattach them to your new tape. And uh, from there, you have a nice replacement uh, cassette, whereas you would have had just a something to throw in the garbage. So um, let's jump over to the computer. I'll show you where you can find these files and uh, and we'll take it from there. Here we are in, uh, in Google uh, Chrome and what we're going to do is jump into Discogs. Uh, Discogs.com and up here in the search box that you see it right by the uh, Discogs logo here. You'll see the, uh, the the search box. In this case, I could either type uh, the Beatles, rock and roll, music. But with this particular cassette, there's actually a um, a code on the side of it, which is 4x2k followed by so I'm going to put a space 115. Three seven. So that's the label number. Uh, in this case, the label is uh, Capitol Records. So um, when I hit search, obviously up comes the uh, the different uh, forms of this cassette that have the same coding. And what looks closest to me, like the uh, the tape that I showed you uh, earlier, is this one here. So if I click Rock and Roll Music. It's the Beatles rock and roll music, and then you see the icon up in the top, and that's the exact same cover that's on this uh, this cassette that I'm holding. Uh, you can't see it because it's off screen. So if you click below that, there's a uh, uh, thing that says more images. It's a hyperlink. So we're going to click on that, and there you have it. That's the exact same label, and that's that code that I was talking about right here, 4X2K11537. Every cassette has... Uh, some sort of coding and you can actually either type in the artist and the title of the album uh, followed by cassette and then search or you can actually use the label codes and uh, and here's the label code here on the front um, in order to go directly to that tape but as you see from previously here so we'll close this out and go back this was the what the search turned up there's actually very quite a few different forms of this cassette and with different uh, album art and whatever. So once again, I like to uh, mirror the, uh, the, the cassette that I have. And in this case, that's the exact label that, uh, that's on the tape that I have here. And then we click on this and more images. And down here, you can actually see, so here's the, uh, here's the J-card graphic that was scanned in, but this person who actually uh, put this into the database, into the Discogs database, also was kind enough to give us 
the labels for the cassette itself. So what I would do here is I'll keep this file open and if I go right click, I don't know if you can see this, I think this uh, gets blocked out, but if you right click on the, on the graphic here, you can just say copy image and then what we're going to do is we're going to paste that into the uh, publisher program that I was mentioning and we'll do that likewise with so that's side one there and that side two and we're going to do that we're going to paste this into the template that I've built in uh, in uh, Microsoft Publisher and like I say Publisher is not the only program you can use any other graphics uh, type program to do this. I just find it's easier for myself because I have, you know, the office suite on my computer. Publisher is actually really, really good at manipulating graphics and putting labeling and all that sort of stuff on much more so than Word. Uh, some people choose to do Word or you can do some open, so open source software like uh, paint.net or uh, Photoshop or whatever you're comfortable with. Okay, so what we're going to do, uh, we'll copy this one over here and then we're going to warp over to Publisher and uh, we'll show you what I do in Publisher. Okay, here we are in, uh, I just opened up Publisher off my desktop. You don't need to need to really see me opening, opening that up. It's of course in my program suite here on, off to the side. So uh, I just opened up this, the account information here, so it just shows you that I'm using Microsoft Office Professional Plus 2016. It's a full install on my uh, uh, desktop. I get a, a good license from, uh, from where I work, so that's I took advantage of that. And uh, so uh, basically I think you just come into a new uh, or open screen when you first open it up. And here on the top, I've uh, created, uh, this was in part one, I created a, a template. And really, it's not really much of a template. It's just a blank uh, publisher, eight and a half by 11 sheet. Uh, you can see my part one uh, project here, the uh, label for that, so I'll delete that. And then as I mentioned, I have two, and that's the only templating part, is I've just got these two cassette uh, things here. Or cassette graphics that I use as a as an, an underlay basically for uh, the cassettes that I uh, the graphics that I'm importing just for sizing. So um, as I mentioned, I've got two screens open. You can only see one screen here, so I'm going to go to the other screen where you saw the uh, the cassette, the Beatles uh, white cassette there. So I'm going to copy that image, and then I'm going to paste it in. And as you can see. It's a little bit, it's quite a bit larger uh, than the cassettes in my template, so we do have to scale it down. And you can actually see some trimming issues here. So a lot of times the people that put these graphics into Discogs will trim them down to the exact size of the, to the exact size of the cassette. So I'm just going to go in Picture Tools and crop this a little bit just to make sure we have an identical size. And this one's skewed. I wouldn't worry too much about the skewing of the uh, angle because when you cut it out, it'll cut out straight anyway. You just want to get it to an approximate size. So there, and then you've got this handle here that you can rotate it 90 degrees to the right. And what I'm going to do is superimpose this. So this is both say side one, but I just need two, one for side one side and the other for side two. So what I do is I line up the top right corner here and then I scale it down to so it's a little smaller and then I'll scale it back up so it's exactly the same size. So that's my side one. And I'm going to go back to the other screen here where you saw the other, the second uh, side two. And I'm going to import that and go do the same thing. So I'll go and crop it a little bit just to trim it down. And go to using the cropping tool built into Publisher, which is really a handy thing to have. And like I say, there's all kinds of graphics programs. ACDC is a good, another good image editor built into it and good for photo manipulation, etc. So there we go. And then what we're going to do is we're going to scroll this again 90 degrees, line that up with the top right corner of the cassette, and then scale it. And 
bring it back up to the size of the cassette. And there you have it. I'm going to make this one a little bigger because I didn't do such a good job of trimming. Just by an edge. It doesn't have to be exact. You'll soon see. And uh, now I'm ready to print. Um, I could also, if well, that'll be part three. I'll show you how to, I'll, I'll do a complete tape from, uh, from both cassette labels and uh, J card labels from a, uh, a new old stock or a repurposed cassette. So here we go. I'm going to just push print and uh, we'll kick over to the print job. And so we're going to go file print. Once again, I go printer properties. I want to make sure that I'm printing in high quality. And uh, so I'm going to go OK with that. It was set there. And then I'm going to just hit print. And it's going to go wirelessly over to my, uh, my Epson uh, Megatank printer. So I'm going to get my phone ready to record that and see how it turns out. So print. There we go, it's just starting the, uh, the print sequ sequence. I have another couple of print jobs on my printer there. In high quality, it prints out a little slower than, uh, than it would in uh, draft or in normal quality. But you do get a really nice uh, nice graphic, as you can see. It's uh, printing out just nicely. And those are actually sized correctly for the cassette. So that's what we're going to trim down. I'll use an X-Acto knife and a pair of, pairs of scissors. I do the outside edge and then the X-Acto knife. I'll uh, trim around where the, uh, the tape hubs are. And I'll show you how to, how to do that. So more to follow. All right, back in my uh, my my little uh, workshop here, and uh, not much required of, as far as uh, tools of the trade. Um, basically, what I use is a, a really nice uh, sharp exacto knife. I've got all kinds of replacement blades um, for it. I've got several of these because these are some of the handiest things for doing this kind of work. A really nice pair of scissors. So uh, you want something that cuts. Uh, you know, that uh, cuts paper really, really well. It doesn't uh, rip the paper or anything like that. And then, of course, I always get a nice steel ruler for uh, cutting straight edges. And you'll see that when we start cutting in around the hub and everything. So first thing we're going to do, obviously, and to save paper, sometimes what I'll do is uh, instead of just doing two tapes on one paper, if I'm doing a bunch of batches of uh, tapes and whatever, I'll try and maximize the uh, the space on my uh, on my paper so I'm not uh, wasting a lot of uh, paper just for you know in this case I'm going to be wasting paper because of look at the size of cassettes I could get actually probably three two more sets of uh, cassettes out of one of these or a J card as well but anyway what I'll do is I'll uh, cut them out to the edge of the uh, you can see, and these are all sized to the sa same size as the, uh, the cassette itself. You'll notice that this one, it's the same sort of label. Um, for whatever reason, they have probably did a different print run, but it's the same code and everything. It's just a different, uh, in, in this case, they stenciled it directly on the tape. And uh, this was uh, just a paper label. So depending on where they're manufactured, um, you will find differences between uh, uh, even if it looks like the same numbering in the same cassette. You just can't avoid that. So I always pick the best one. There was one that had the yellow like that that I saw in the graphics, but it was it was really, it looked like the, the image was really bad and, and the condition of it was not good. So I picked a better quality uh, graphic, which is this one. So, and you can pick and choose what works best for you. So we'll just cut that off. And then it's always good to have good lighting so that you can see where the lines are that you're cutting. So there you go. There's one label at side one. Still not done. I always kind of trim the corners off here to give it that sort of cassette look right here like that. 
And then uh, you can see how they have the corners trimmed on most of these and the embedded on a lot of the, uh, the cassette shells. So I find by trimming it, it'll fit most shells. In this case, it doesn't really matter. I just like the look of it. And same with this one. We're going to cut this nice, nicely along the edges. And a little bit of shadowing here, but I can see it adequately. And any of the scrap pieces of paper either go to recycling or go to my fireplace to help me start fires in the winter. It's winter right now. And this is a perfect indoor evolution uh, when you got snotty weather outside. So that's why I kind of uh, picked today to do this. Even though we don't get a lot of snow here on the west coast of Canada, we uh, have in the last little while. So there we go. So there we got two cassettes. That goes to recycling. Got to do our part for Mother Earth, I guess. And so now we have the issue of um, the tape that we're going to use. There's the blank tape, and that will superimpose, and obviously you want to be able to see the cassette and everything. So what we're going to do is we're going to trim out the inside of this. And to do that, I use a ruler. You can actually see the oval shape that goes around the cassette. So what we're going to do is basically trim it around the lines. So for the straight part, I use the ruler, and then uh, to cut around the corner, I just use... Uh, my eyeball and a steady hand in order to uh, uh, cut an arch, arching curve to uh, follow the lines of that. So with my, my cutter, now I'm going to move the light here a bit so I got a better angle on this side. See, and now I can see the edge better. I actually do this in another room usually with where the lighting conditions are much better, but uh, we'll do it here, it's fine. So there, so just top dead center to top dead center. And I flip it around. And this is the side two uh, template. Cut there, top dead center of the wheel. And then now using the Mark I eyeball, let's see if I can get this over here again, just so you can see my hand a little bit better. And using my Mark I eyeball, I just trim it around there, and then I just trim this around. This isn't as perfect as I usually, I usually do a better job of it, but I'm just rushed, I'm trying to do this in a rush. Okay, and there you see it, the opening, and then it'll fit on there accordingly. And the second part. This is side one. So we're cutting the first straight edge. And I should have moved the light back here, but that's fine. We'll make it work. There we go. And do a better job of doing the curve here. There. And there. So there you have it. There's your cassette template. And what we'll use, stuffed it in my pocket here, is one of these, uh, I got these at the dollar store for three for two bucks. And they last forever. And uh, so glue stick, Elmer's, whatever, this is uh, just regular dollar store stuff. And then you can put your label on like that, centered, glue it on. And for, for the gluing process, I just get a little piece of uh, paper towel here so I don't get glue all over my... Uh, the other part of it is I use a cutting board here. I think I showed that in part one. Um, 
So the cutting board is useful so you don't have to worry about cutting into the wood like on my wood desk here. This you can actually cut across and it's uh, works perfectly. So that side one of the tape. Uh, usually I don't put the labels on until after I've done the recording and I'll tell you why in a second, but it doesn't matter. You can do it anytime. Um, so what we'll do is we'll glue this all up. And the paper towel is just to prevent glue from getting all over your work surface and everything. And you can just bundle up the paper towel. I get a lot of mileage out of one sheet of paper towel on this. And then using your eyeball, just kind of center it. Shift it around, looks good. And then we'll put side two on. Um, I do agree that uh, um, paper glue, like uh, like these uh, glue sticks are, are probably not the ideal glue for this. Um, I would say contact cement is probably a little bit uh, better and more permanent. But uh, you never know, I might get sick of a tape and uh, I like this kind of a glue because it's easier to peel off if uh, you wanted to repurpose the tape and you don't end up using the tape as much as you thought you would. And so it gives you a little bit more flexibility for repurposing tapes later down the road. But uh, I haven't actually had any problems with the labels coming off, but uh, I would say contact cement is better, but it's a little more probably more expensive and more permanent if you do that because then you get residue on the tapes and everything. But as you can see, uh, aside from doing the recording itself, I've got the tape all made up now and it looks pretty good and it looks good in its, uh, in its native shell. So the part I was telling you about is when you record this, when you get the five, I record them from, I can record them either from albums if I have this particular album. A lot of times I do this as a backup. In this case, it's not a backup because it was a, it was a, an original cassette that I had. Um, I'll find the, uh, I'll get the files in FLAC, digital lossless. I'll record them and then I'll delete them. And then, uh, and one side you'll notice is always going to be shorter or longer than the other. And what I do is I always record the longest side first. And then, uh, rather than having a lot of uh, blank space at the end of the tape, then I use a, uh, an editing a cutting block here, basically, to trim the tape down and, and uh, sp a splicing block, basically. And uh, so what I'll do is when the tape, the longest side ends, I'll cut it there, I'll add 10 seconds, cut it there and then uh, and then unwind the rest of the tape using my trusty little drill here which has a, uh, a bit that I 3d printed you can also use a Torx T45 I think I showed that in a in a previous video on how to uh, repair tapes um, and you can actually wind the tape using this it's, it actually works really really well so you can actually wind a whole tape really really well with that and then uh, so you can strip off the excess tape and then uh, have the tape cassette the right length for that cassette. So uh, we'll do the recording and I'll show you what, what I mean and I'll show you how I do the, uh, the uh, uh, cutting off the excess tape uh, if there is any on this one. So back in a minute. All right, here's the, uh, the tape I, uh, I've made. So uh, this is side A and as you can see side A is 37 minutes 34 seconds. And then if I go to this playlist, load in Automix, this side is side B is 37 minutes and two seconds. So obviously I'm going to play side A first. It's not always the case where side A is longest, but uh, most of the times it is. And uh, so what I've chosen is a 90 minute tape. I should have said that up front um, in order to fit the length of the uh, both sides. And uh, so 90 minute tape is usually 45 minutes on each side. So obviously, even with the long side of 37 minutes and 34 seconds, I will have about five, six, seven minutes ish um, extra tape at the end. So what I'll do is I'll show you how do I how I trim that. And so this will be the long side. I'll snip it after 10 seconds after the uh, the uh, 
side is complete and uh, flip it over and do the other recording. So let's do that. Here's my recording setup. I've got uh, a DIY quad system that I uh, retro refurbished, I guess, and uh, two Nakamichi three head decks here. So I'm gonna use, uh, using the bottom one here for now. It doesn't matter which one. They're both equally as good. Uh, so what I'm going to do is push play, you do about a 10 second lead in, and then uh, start the recording. And I'm not going to record too much music just because I don't want to trip off any uh, uh, YouTube alerts or anything. So starting the, uh, the play, and then we'll go over here and start in a few seconds here. So I've got the video turned way, or the uh, sound turned way down on my system. There's still, you can still see some, uh, hear some bleed through there a bit at uh, zero. And uh, so it's recording, so we'll let that play and then I'll show you how I trim it down. Okay, we're back after 37 minutes, 37 and a half minutes of recording. Plus I always add an extra 10 seconds after the final song just to get a little uh, extra lead. Um, for splicing and everything so that's what we're going to do now so as you can see I've recorded side one and now I've got that much extra tape left and uh, obviously if I'm using my Walkman or, or my home uh, one of my home decks um, after the program rolls out I don't want to sit there and listen to five minutes of silence or four minutes of silence and uh, so what I do is I'll take it on my little bench here again, take a set of uh, nice tweezers, and this is where you need some splicing gear. Um, some of the tools of the trade um, are of course a splicing block, splicing 1 8 inch uh, sp splicing tape, a razor blade for uh, cutting tape and, uh, and for cutting the, uh, uh, mating up the, the splice on your uh, splicing block. So what we'll do and then, of course, my uh, drill that I showed you earlier. We'll show you how that works. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out of the middle the tape. And remembering that I've got 10 seconds of blank space after, at the end. So I have a little bit of uh, lee room to play with here. Um, and what I'll do is I will cut the tape. And just leave that off trailing off and the uh, the tape that I want to get rid of is the ones that, that's on this spool here so uh, I use price tags you can buy these in rolls at Staples I just use a price tag to um, tape on the end of this tape here and I'll show you how I do that because I want to tape it to the drill bit to the uh, end of my drill and that's the uh, Part that I showed you earlier. It's a 3D printed one. You can use a Torx bit or whatever. Um, I don't need to wind the hubs with this particular one, but I just use the same bit. And then I just tape this on and start my, my tape. And then now I'm just rolling the tape off the hub onto my, onto my drill bit here. If you do it slowly, it won't pull on the tape or anything. You might see it move a little bit. Sometimes I'll just tape the cassette down. And the idea is you want to slow it down. That's why I use a drill, because you can go fast or slow. And then I'll slow it down towards the end, because uh, once I get the leader out, I want to reattach the leader to the end of uh, the program material side of the tape. And close. There's our leader. So what I'm going to do is cut it off after the splicing tape on the leader. And then all of this just, uh, just there's not much tape left anyway. It just goes into uh, recycling or the garbage. And uh, so now with my splicing block. I'll uh, use the short side of the splicing block for the leader part. And if you cut it straight enough, you won't have to actually use that well to uh, cut it flat. But uh, if not, you can uh, 
you can always just uh, use your razor blade and cut it nice and straight so then the two sides made up pretty good closely just throw away the extra little bit because you don't want that getting caught on your heads or anything and then with the tape uh, put a little extra on the other side same idea you're gonna cut the groove pull the extra tape away and now you got the two tapes are butted up perfectly and then you use your 1 8 inch splicing tape so it's always hard to find the end of it here. I just use my nail. You can figure, feel where the end is. So pull a little bit of that tape off. Again, using my cutting block. So I'll just cut the, uh, the crumpled piece off the end here. And you use about, I don't know, a little more than, a little more than half an inch. And then uh, use my tweezers to place it in the splicing block. And then press it down with my hands. And here's the trick. You always pull from the, uh, the leader side. It's thicker. Sometimes if you pull it on the tape side, the tape will uh, decouple from the, uh, the splicing tape. So if you lift it here every time, it'll work that the splicing tape will stay in place. And then I just go over it with my finger here just to make sure you're getting all the bubbles out of the tape and it's got a good, uh, good seal on the tape. And then, just using my little tweezers, I'll roll up the extra tape. And there, side one is complete. Uh, there's 10 seconds of silence at the end of it. And now I can flip the tape over and now I'm ready to record the shorter side uh, two. And of course, there'll be a longer period of silence after the, uh, side two because that was the short side. On this one, it's not very long. It's only about 20 seconds or, or 30 seconds is a difference between the, the two sides. So once I've done that, uh, the tape is complete and we're ready to add that to my collection and uh, enjoy it. And I high quality tapes, these uh, these bulk tapes that I bought uh, here locally. These This was a 90 minute. Most of mine are 60 minute because the uh, Shorter pre-recorded tapes are usually less than 60 minutes long, but I have different lengths for different purposes. And uh, yeah, so uh, with this, um, where the tape was broken, I didn't want to throw away a perfectly good J card. I've got the original tape to prove that I am the owner of the material on this tape. And all I'm doing is uh, protecting my investment of purchasing this old tape which is no longer functional, but I still have a listenable, listenable uh, tape in my collection. So that's what I do when I'm uh, missing a, uh, a tape for a J card, more specifically when it's uh, a broken tape or something that's uh, uh, failed, it's, uh, you know, the recording is bad or, or whatever. Um, that's a way of recovering your uh, um, investment. So. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please uh, drop any comments you have in the uh, comment section, and I try to get back to everybody with, uh, with an answer if, uh, if people do have questions. So thank you for watching.